Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be back with you again this morning as I'll be coming to you with the truth of God's Word, just pointing to Christ and Him crucified for everything that we need. And outside of the blood of Jesus Christ being applied to our hearts and lives through faith, we can't receive what we we should be receiving from God because it all comes to us based upon our experience with the words of truth that God has given to us to be received here in our hearts and lives today. And as long as we'll look to that sacrifice, take hold on that nail-scarred hand of Jesus, then he'll lead us and guide us. He'll continue to be the author and finisher of that which he has authored and finished for us to believe in. And that's his sacrifice at Calvary. And I thank you all for being here this morning. And I'm glad to be preaching and teaching the only thing that works for uh, the benefit of others, as that's what this is all about, is God desires to impart his words of knowledge and understanding in our hearts and lives through the preaching of God's truth, which is Jesus Christ and him crucified. God doesn't work in any other way. He only works in one way. The apostle Paul said it in 1 Corinthians 1 and 23, and and we shouldn't turn away from it just because we're uh, listening to other things that other people have to say that that tickles the ear. You know, there there's a spirit of Antichrist in this world that's trying to draw you believers and us believers away from the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. But it's only as we come to him by faith every day that we're going to continue to receive that which we need to. And then the Lord will impart the words of wisdom and knowledge and understanding to our hearts and lives to where we'll be able to get up and walk in the victory of that sacrifice every day. And I, again, I thank you for being here this morning. And, and I know that the Lord has more for us in the days ahead and I'm just thankful to be in that day right now that he has made. And today is the day of our salvation. And as long as we'll keep believing, we'll keep advancing in the things that are of the Lord. And we're about to see some of them things in the teaching here this morning. So if you would, grab your Bibles and turn with me to Romans chapter 6. And this is uh, part 9. And we will be beginning in, in verse 5. This is the... The second part of what it means to be planted in the likeness of his death. And while you're getting there, I'm going to open up with a word of, of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for the time that we have set aside, Lord, to come to you, Lord, to, to study, to show ourselves approved unto you, to seek your face, to be able to receive of you, to glory and your sacrifice, which brings us into your presence to where you receive the glory that we offer into your holy name. And Lord, you are worthy. And we thank you that your name is magnified in our hearts and lives, Lord God, because of our faith in your sacrifice. And we just give you all the praise and all the glory for it. I ask you to bless the people this morning, Lord God. Impart the words of wisdom and of knowledge and understanding to their hearts and lives, Lord God. Open our hear ears this morning to be attent unto the hearing of God's word and truth, Lord God. And help our eyes to see as you anoint our eyes with eye salve, Lord God. As we walk in this truth and learn to live this way each and every day. And Lord, we just give you all the praise and all the glory for it. And in Christ Jesus' holy name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Romans chapter 6, verse 5, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. When we've been planted together with Christ in the likeness of his death, we'll no longer be living after the carnal nature, but we'll be living as those who have been raised up together with Christ into newness of life. And I'm going to restate that. When we've been crucified with Christ and we're now learning to live for him, 
by faith in his sacrifice, that old man has been crucified. That's no longer who we are anymore. We've been given a new life source. We are not to be uh, reaching in and, and trying to take anything from what that old man had because he had nothing. The only thing that we had was death, which brought separation from God into our hearts and lives because we was all born in sin. But when we believed in that sacrifice, we was crucified with Jesus Christ by our faith in what he did for us on the cross, that that measure of faith that we receive from the moment we believe that, that, that the Holy Spirit came in and did the work of the cross in our hearts and lives because the, the faith that we received of the Son of God is what we now live by so the Holy Spirit can work in our hearts and lives. You see, we got a new life source. We're no longer living off that old carnal nature anymore. That is not who we are. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. Old things, what we were before, before conversion, before we got saved, before we said yes to Jesus Christ and his way of the cross, is now passed away. All those old things are no longer usable. They wasn't any use to us then. All they could do is get us in a mess and in a bind and, and digging ourselves deeper and deeper in that old ditch of sin, getting bound, uh, bogged up in that miry clay. But let me tell you, when Jesus came on the scene, he offered us exactly what we had need of when he paid the price on Calvary so that we could go free from the dominion of sin, no longer dominated by sin anymore. And we've been resurrected into newness of life with him, meaning we now have a new life source. But the only way that I can access this newness of life that I've been given is as I keep my faith and trust in the sacrifice of Christ to where my old man has been crucified with him. Because if I don't keep looking to the cross, then I'm going to go astray. I'm going to get off in left field. I'm going to be doing my own thing. I may be trying to call it God, but it won't be God because God ain't a part of anything except what his son did for us. I said we needed the sacrifice. We still need the sacrifice. We're always going to need Jesus Christ and the price that he paid on that old rugged cross for our sins. As long as we are in these fallen conditions that we're in. There is no reaching a state of perfection in this flesh. And the reason why is because we still have a sin nature inside of us. That's the reason why God has given us an object of faith a place to where the anchor will hold, a place to where. Uh, we have an assurance, a place that we can hope in, something that we can trust in, an anchor that's never going to fail us. He ain't never going to let us go. We can let him go, but he's always going to be there drawing us back to that sure foundation, back to that solid rock, back to that immovable mass, and teaching us how to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior as long as we will submit and commit to his will, and to his way. But outside of faith in the sacrifice of Christ, it is not God's way because God is only working in one thing from Genesis to Revelations. It's all about the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, it's all about that scarlet thread that runs all the way through the word of God. And outside of that, if we're not looking through, through eyes of faith to where we see the price that Jesus paid, then we're not going to see Jesus in these scriptures. We're just going to be trying to use them out of context and do our own thing. God's not working in our own thing. That's why many have gone astray because it wasn't about them. God forbid that any should try to glory in the flesh because there ain't no flesh going to glory before God. The only thing that God has given us to glory in is, is His Son and what His Son has done for us. I remember 
where God brought me from, but I'm not looking back to go back to those things because God brought me from that, and He's not taking me back to that. He has greater things in store for those of us who will look to Him and believe that He changes the condition of our hearts as long as we continue to trust in His sacrifice of God's only way. It is man's only solution. It is our only hope. And it is the only provision that God has provided for all to be saved, but not only saved, learning to live that way every day. If we're not learning to live by our faith that he has given to us because we had absolutely nothing to bring to the table, then we're not living saved and sanctified lives that's going to bring glory to God because we're still out here in sin and selfish pleasures trying to do our own things because we're following our will and not the will that God has designed for us to be following after in our hearts and lives. And that's the will of God that can only be carried out in our lives as we take hold on that nail-scarred hand by a denial of self and follow Jesus Christ. God has everything that we need in His Son and what His Son did for us at Calvary. As long as we will do one thing, and that's believe. Just simply believe. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him that his old man's been crucified with him, laid to rest in the baptism of his death and resurrected in the newness of life, should not perish but have everlasting life. God has an abundance of his grace in store for those who will continue to believe in the sacrifice of Calvary as his only way. But if we get to trust in anything else, what we're doing is we're out here trusting in self. And God cannot be glorified when we're trusting our way. Because God has made a way for all to be saved. And as I was getting back to reading that statement again, let me back up to, I'll just read it all over again. When we've been planted together with Christ in the likeness of his death, we'll no longer be living after the carnal nature but we'll be living as those who have been raised up together with Christ into newness of life, freed from the dominion of sin. In Romans 6 and 14, it says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Now, I want to say this right here, and then we're going to back up to verse 13. Sin is not going to have dominion over us just because we claim to be under grace, but because we are no longer yielding. Now, let me read verse 13. Neither yield you your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those who are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Our members, when we are yielding our members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but we are yielding ourselves as those who are alive from the dead. And our instru- and our members as instruments of righteousness unto God, because when we do, then sin will no longer be having dominion over us because we're not under the law, but we're under the grace of God. You see, we're, we're not just going to have grace working in our lives because we want it to work. Grace is only going to work in our lives when we're yielding under that which God has desired for the grace of God to abound and to superabound in our hearts and lives every day. And that's when we're taking hold on the nail-scarred hand of Jesus as the only way. You see, we're yielding, we're giving way 
to that work of righteousness that God carried out in his son before the foundation of the world. But it's been revealed in these last times to us. The revelation's been given. Jesus Christ is the son of God. He was born of a virgin. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned our sin because he had no sin. He was born of his father, conceived of the Holy Spirit for that very particular reason right there is come to coming to atone for all of our sins so we could be saved and set free and living that way every day. You see, I've got to take my one-time experience to a lifestyle of experiences with the Lord. I've got to be growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. I've got to be coming to that understanding every day that He still loves me. He still gave His life for me on that old rugged cross. And as long as I'll keep that in my perspective and that in my mind and knowing that there's nothing good in myself, but my old man's been crucified with Him, then by faith I'll be able able to get up and live in the victory that he's provided for us all to live our lives by through simply taking hold on that nail scarred hand i've got to follow jesus i can't follow man i've got to follow the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ and him crucified, the word of the Lord being revealed to me and truth and God desires to reveal it to each person's heart and life as, as, as he sees fit to give to us in our understanding as we are learning to yield to what his son has done for us. But if we are not yielding, then there will not be any grace because we're under law to where sin is abounding in our lives. And it's not the grace of God that is causing us to no longer be dominated by sin. And I know that's not what most of the church wants to hear, but thank the Lord uh, People didn't call me to preach the gospel. God called me to preach the gospel and give it to people so they, so those who would receive of him could be saved, set free, and delivered from the dominion of sin, learning how to walk in that victory every day. And that, that's what we're here for. We're here to give one another what we need. And what we need is more of Jesus through the preaching of the cross and less of ourselves because self is the problem. If you would turn with me this morning to 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 5 through 6 as, as we're going to be learning what it means to be planted in the likeness of his death. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 5 through 6 it says you also... As lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay inside on a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him shall not be confounded. When we are looking to the cross, we have no reason to be ashamed because the rock of our salvation, he is exalted. I said when we're looking to the cross, we're not going to be ashamed of what we've been given. We're not going to care whenever people start casting all kinds of negative thoughts towards our way. We're just going to keep on holding on to Jesus Christ and we're going to keep on marching on with the Lord and with our brothers and sisters in Christ and we're going to keep on believing for those who are out here lost and going in the wrong direction. We're going to keep loving those that that are uh, obviously trying to 
to get us to come down to their level. You see, I ain't got time for all that mess. I've wasted too much time in my life to get in some little petty argument of, of who's the best. Let me tell you who's the best of us all. His name is Jesus Christ. He bled on an old rugged cross. He never sinned a day in his life. He didn't deserve what he got. I deserved it. You deserved it, but he did not deserve it, but he stood in for mankind kind so we could be saved and set free and learning to live that way and it no longer be about us but us learning to make it all about the one who came to give his sinless life for our sins so that we could go free so that one day and that day is coming very soon that we're going to be just like him for we shall see him as he is then we're not going to have to had to worry about the old sin nature in our lives constantly warring against the new nature anymore because then we're going to be completely like him. But until then, we still in this condition. But thankfully, thankfully in our condition, we have the comforter who's walking alongside of us to help us in our time of need to keep pointing us to the one who is coming back, who did come and bleed and die on that cross and was raised again on the third day. And we've been resurrected in the newness of life with him. And it's all by faith in his sacrifice. And that's what lively stones are. Those who have been raised again from the dead, no longer bound up in their sins and their trespasses, but we've been set free by the blood of Jesus Christ and we're being built up a spiritual house. Let me tell you, this house is not a house that's being made by the hands of men, but this house is a house that has been built upon that solid foundation of Jesus Christ and Him crucified and it was all of God and not at all of any one of us. You see, Jesus did everything we need the sinful hands of man couldn't touch it because it would only bring corruption. That's why purpose-driven life doesn't work. That's why celebrate recovery doesn't work. That's why name it, claim it, blab it, and grab it ain't going to get you anywhere but in a bigger turmoil than what you're already in. You see, it's only as we take hold on the blood of the Lamb each and every day, knowing that that victory is the price that He paid for us at Calvary so we could live our lives in that freedom, no longer restricted by the law because we're no longer under law, but we received the grace of God that brought the freedom of the Son of God into our hearts and lives from the moment we believed and we received the faith to live by His Word every day. But it's only as we're looking to that narrow way. This road... It's not going to get any any broader. It's narrow. It's a narrow road that we're on. It's a narrow way that we're on. Many are out here on the broad way, on the big old highway that you could do anything and live anything, a melting pot. Anything and everything goes. The church right along with the world. 99.9% .9 of the church is going right along with the world. But there's that... Point zero one that is going on with the Lord. And that is those that keep coming back to the cross every day, reckoning ourselves to be dead indeed into sin by having died with Christ. You see, we are to account ourselves to no longer be living like we used to, that old nature anymore, underneath that law of sin and death. But we are rec to reckon ourselves to be dead to that by having died with Jesus Christ and raised up in the newness of life with Him to where we can walk in the victory of His sacrifice because He's given us a new life source that we no longer have to live off the carnal nature anymore. I didn't say we was going to get it 100% right, but we're no longer out here practicing sin anymore. We're learning how to live our lives in the freedom and victory that Jesus Christ has won for us all at Calvary when He made the way for us to go free. 
So you also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, he's elect and precious, and he who believes on him shall not be confounded. We have no reason to be ashamed of what others think of us. When we have the victory of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ working in our hearts and lives because the Holy Spirit keeps leading us and guiding us in that truth, I'm not going to be sitting around caring what people's thinking about me. I'm going to be sitting around praying for them people because I care about them. When people keep trying to call me names or do whatever they want or trying to use manipulative things to get me to come down to their level, I'm just going to preach the gospel. I'm going to keep pointing to the truth if I get it wrong in the situation because my attitude or something like that is wrong in the mix. I'm just going to say, Lord, forgive me because I'm believing it in my heart. Help me help this person or them people who, who or whoever they might be. You see, we're, we're learning to show the love of God to others. We're not here to do anything that's going to bring hurt or harm to our brothers and sisters in Christ or even those in the world. We're here to show them the love of God, but sometimes the love of God comes right out from among them who are going in the wrong direction. I'm not going to be a part of anything that ain't 100% gospel truth. I'm here to learn to live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me on that old rugged tree and ain't nobody going to bring me in to know uh, no arguments going on. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to be a part of it. I don't want, I do not want it. That's what the world does. We're not of them. We're to come out from among them. And we are to be separate. Why? Because we're living stones. We've been made alive by the blood of Jesus Christ. We've been separated by the God that we served to show the love of God to a lost and dying world who's on their way to hell. And I promise you, you don't want yours going to hell and I don't want mine going to hell either. I, I ain't going in that direction and I ain't going to live that way either. I'm going to point people to Calvary because I care, because God has placed his love inside my heart for people and I'm believing for souls to be saved in this last day and I'm not coming down off the wall for one instant for one person to be able to, to get into an argument or anything like that mess it's just not worth it to me anymore there's only one thing that's worth it to me and yes I keep stressing it over and over and over again because we need to be careful what we say and that's what the Lord is teaching me. We have to be careful how we address situations. And we need to constantly be bringing it for the Lord. Lord, remove the things out of me that you don't want said. And give me that which needs to be said to your people. Because I want to see souls coming back, getting on fire for the Lord, walking walking in that victory that he's provided for us all to walk in there's plenty of room at the cross there's plenty of room at calvary's cross for us all jesus christ paid the price he made the way and as long as we continue to trust in him each and every day, then he'll continue to lead us and guide us in that victory. You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Lively stones means that we are fragments 
of the solid foundation that has already been laid, which is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's, that's what it means to be built up a spiritual house unto the Lord. You see, we're fragments of what Christ has already done for us at Calvary. We are reflections of the light that is shining, that shined into our hearts and lives, and it is for others to be able to see the way as we're learning to walk on that narrow way ourselves. You see, this this gospel is all about others. We are our brother's keeper, and we are here to present the gospel of Jesus Christ in its righteous context. And if we are learning to walk on that path of righteousness, then there's going to be a hope and an assurance and a confidence and, a, and an unashamedness in my life that I know that I'm learning to live my life in the victory of the cross, and I have what it takes to live by faith because it's not me that I'm trusting in. It's Jesus Christ and that solid foundation that he has laid and he is laying in each and every person's heart and life who will take hold of that nail-scarred hand and trust and believe in him. In him. In him to where our old man has been crucified, laid to rest to be remembered no more. And just as God by his glory raised up Jesus from the dead, so we've even been raised up with him to live by the new life source that he has given us. And that is the Holy Spirit, the spirit of regeneration, the spirit who came in and did the work of the cross inside our hearts and lives, who crucified us to that old sin nature. You see, that's not who we are anymore. Jesus Christ has placed that, that spirit of regeneration that renewed us and is strengthening us daily as long as we continue to walk on that narrow way. But if we look to any other way, then it won't bring about the desired results because it'll continue to be us going astray and not us walking to where we need to go and that's straight to the foot of the cross with everything. Everything that pertains to our lives should be pertaining to our lives in godliness, learning how to live righteously and soberly right before uh, the presence of God because that's who we're, we're studying to show ourselves approved unto. That's who we're living unto now. We're no longer living unto ourselves. I'm not, I'm not out here living unto other people for people to see me, to, for people to be able to, to glory in my flesh, but I'm living unto the God who saved me. And in that process, I'm going to be showing them the way by the life that I'm living here in everything that God has placed my hands to be able to do. You see, everywhere that the sole of our foot touches, we should be claiming it as a possession for, for the glory of God, because that's, that's what we're getting victory over through our faith in his sacrifice so we can show the glory of God in our lives. That glory is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That's the only way that we're going to be able to walk in newness of life as we keep clinging to the cross. But I was thinking about this after the broadcast last uh, weekend, uh, how when David uh, finally inquired of the Lord and he found out how to transport, uh, move the Ark of the Covenant from Obed-Edom's house to his. I was thinking about this part of it right here. And you know that, that the Word of God, it, it showed them that it was every six paces, every 18 foot, they, they, uh, the priest carried it over their shoulders and, and they would, uh, the Ark of the Covenant and, and, they would offer up a sacrifice every 18 foot. And I got thinking about this. There was a trail of blood all the way from Obed-Edom's house to David's. But I got to thinking about it a little in this, in this sense of it right here. Is there a trail of blood everywhere you're going? Are people seeing the sacrifice of Jesus Christ in my life? In your life, are they seeing the reflection of Christ, a crucified, risen Savior who now lives and dwells inside these temples 
that we are because we belong to God? Are they seeing him or are they still seeing us? You see, in our condition, we still need to be being brought up to our position in him. If we take a closer look, we'll realize that we still need more of Jesus Christ and less of us. You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that is acceptable unto God. And when we're being built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices, which is acceptable to God, it's because we're not trying to build the house. We're being built upon the foundation that has already been laid, and that is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. In Psalms 127 and 1, it says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain who build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wakes in vain. If the Lord is not doing it, through the preaching of Christ and Him crucified, then it's not going to bring any glory to God. I don't care what the focus is. I don't care what the good intentions of the heart are. The tree that Adam and Eve ate off of that God told them not to eat from, uh, and He told them that when they did eat it, it would surely bring death. It was bring, going to bring separation in their lives from him. Their disobedience to that word and them eating off of that tree wasn't just a tree of evil. It was also a tree of good. It was the knowledge of good and evil. So the good in us is just as bad as the evil that's inside of us. That's why God had to crucify that old man and give us a new life source so we would no longer be trying to live off that old carnal, sinful nature, trying to earn our way with God through the good that we do or despising others from the evil and wicked, deceitful heart that we was born with. You see, it's all wickedness before the eyes of God when he sent a sinless sacrifice to save our lives by giving Jesus Christ to die on that old rugged cross for our sins. And you know, I, I'm i not concerned how many times I say the cross every time I preach or how many times I represent, I say it in representation to Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary. I, I I'm not interested or concerned about that. I want people to know that when they walked away from what I preached, that they heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it was the Holy Spirit who was able to move through my life and ministry to impart something into their heart and life to be able to strengthen them to walk in the victory that he paid the price for us all to have. You know, I, I could care less if I say, Jesus Christ and him crucified a thousand times or just two or three. As long as people know that that is where our faith is to be at every day is in the blood that Jesus shed on that old rugged tree. It's always going to come back to Calvary or it's not the preaching of the gospel. So let me interject this side note right here. The Lord builds us up a spiritual house through the preaching of the cross. He doesn't use us to tear one another down. Yes, the Lord tears the things out of our lives that need to be removed. And he builds us up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up Spiritual sacrifices, which alone is acceptable to God through faith in Jesus Christ our Lord, because we're planted upon that solid foundation. Anything else is not of the Lord. Anything else is not of the Lord. The only thing that is of the Lord 
is the preaching of the gospel of the cross. If we're trying to use this word to build our church, then we're watching in vain. If we're trying to use this word to build our ministries, then the watchman is watching in vain. If we're trying to do it and not allowing the Lord, the chief cornerstone, the one who is our Savior, our Lord, our healer, our deliverer, our everything that we need, our God, he, He's our strong tower, He's our shelter, He's everything that we need, but we can only be in His presence as it's by faith in His sacrifice at Calvary. If we're trying to do it through any other means than looking to the one who's already done it for us at Calvary, then it's just us trying to do it. And the reason why is because we're trying to make a name for ourselves. It's not about us. You know, I was thinking about this uh, when when Brother Curtis was in uh, Wichita Falls, Texas with Brother Colton and them down there that, you know, they, they got to talking about the Spreaker podcast and the app and, and Brother Curtis mentioned my name because I do the Spreaker just like they do. And, uh, but I got to thinking about it in this sense right here. And this is what I told my son. I said, you know, when, when your faith is in Christ and the cross, and that's what you're learning, and that's what you're learning to live by, your faith will be spoken of. Our name should represent the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us on that old rugged cross. And when they do, then it's not going to be us people. That, it's not going to be us that people are looking at. It's going to be Him. It's going to be Jesus. I can tell you what I did. I got myself in a big old mess. I got myself in a big old bind of sin. I almost lost my life and all of it. But God's mercy and His long suffering toward me reached down his hand and I repented and he pulled me back up out out of that miry clay we ain't got time for nothing we ain't got time for nothing else that's what we've got time to do is to point to Jesus Christ and his sacrifice and to keep learning to make it all about him to keep learning to make it all about the blood that he shed for us on that old rugged tree and hallelujah to his name. And that's how we give him glory every day. By faith in the sacrifice. And when this old flesh gets to where it wants to lay that cross down. We just come back and believe. Jesus you did it. The Lord's going to have a word for you. He's going to have something to encourage you. Something that's going to strengthen you. Something that's going to edify you. Maybe even something that's going to correct you. But it's just because he loves us. And and that's just the way it is. He loves us and he desires us to stay on that straight and narrow path. And he's going to continue to lead us and guide us in that victory. But before we finish here this morning, turn with me to Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. And I say also unto you that you are Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, I want to say this right here. The Lord changed his name from Simon to Peter, which means fragment of a rock. And as I was studying this out last night, it, it just... I got to thinking about it on, on this this idea and basis of, of the Word of God right here that, that only the Lord, and this is what I believe the Lord was showing us by changing His name from Simon to Peter, that only the Lord can take us from the old to the new. Only the Lord Jesus Christ 
can do it. But when, it's only when we believe that he is the son of God. And then God will reveal that to us. You see, you see, that's, that's the only way. You say, well, how does, how does he do it? Let me show you. Verse 18. Upon this rock, I will build my church. He builds it upon the solid foundation of Jesus Christ and him crucified because that is the power of God and that is the wisdom of God. And when we place our faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, then the Holy Spirit will move in our hearts and lives and help us to stand strengthened and encouraged every day as long as we continue in our with our faith in that narrow way, then we will be able to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, freed from the dominion of sin, no longer out here following after the lust of the flesh, after the affections of an old fleshly fallen nature, but we are following after the victory that Christ has provided for us all to have through the death of his sacrifice on that old rugged tree. This is how he builds us up spiritual houses to bring glory to his name because we no longer belong to ourselves. We are the temple of God. And as temples of God, we have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside our hearts and lives to lead us and to guide us and to teach us along this path of righteousness every day. As long as we continue to cling to that nail-scarred hand of Jesus as God's only way. But if we're looking to other things, then God's not going to move in our lives. He's not going to move in our situations and he's not going to lead us and he's not going to guide us in his truth because we're still trying to do it our way. It's not going to be our way, church. It's going to be God's way. God's way is Christ and the cross. The preaching of the cross is what draws all men unto him not to me, not to you, not to anybody else. He may and he will draw them to the ministries that God has placed in our lives that's preaching and teaching the gospel of his sacrifice. That's so they can come to know Jesus, so they can come to know who he is and what he has done for us all on that old rugged cross. But it's not so we can glory in how many people we got following us on Facebook or how many we got following us there or how many goes to our church or, or who the message of the cross came by. Let me tell you who it came by. It came by God before the foundation of this world, but it's been revealed to every person who will believe. So that puts all glory in itself right out the window. So I'm not going with you out that way. I'm going to stay on this straight and narrow path that Jesus provided to, for me to walk on because he had to reveal it to my heart. But you see, in that same sense, I'm thankful for the ones that God raised up who have preached this message of Christ in him crucified and those who are still preaching this message of Christ in him crucified that's helping me to stay the course and to walk on that narrow way. You see, it's the preaching of the gospel. Why? Because God chose the foolishness of preaching to save them who believe. Why? Because God chose it, not man. Not man. We got ourselves in a mess when we took a bite off that tree and every one of us was right there eating it. But Jesus Christ, out of his love for us, God, out of his love for us, sent his son in the garden that day and offered us a promise. That promise throughout the entirety of the word of God was fulfilled when he bowed his head and gave up the ghost and said, it is finished he said it's finished. He hung his head, gave up the ghost. The veil of the temple was rent in twain. That signified his flesh being broken for our sins. What Jesus did on that old rugged cross was for the victory of us all to be able to live our lives freed 
from the dominion of sin. Somebody's got to get this here today. We are free from the dominion of sin by our faith in what he's done for us at Calvary. But it's got to be God's way. It's got to be what God chose. It's got to be what Jesus did on that old rugged tree. It is finished. He has been raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, and he's seated at the right hand of God right now at this very instant, making intercession. The Bible says he ever lives to make intercession for us. And we are living stones. We are alive in Christ by faith in his sacrifice at Calvary. And as long as we'll continue to look to the cross, then we will grow in his grace. But if we look to other things, then it won't be the grace of God that we're growing in. It'll be us growing further and further away from him. To where we don't know who he is. He said, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father, he said, many will say to me in that day, have we not done this and have we not done that? What they're saying is look at all the great things that we've done. And yeah, they out there claiming they doing it. But let me tell you, if it wasn't by faith in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, it wasn't the Lord building the house to be a spiritual house planted upon that solid foundation. It was just them doing it, confessing the name of the Lord along the way. And he said they was going to depart from him because they never knew him. He's going to send them away. And here's why. Because they're working iniquity. It's a sin for him who knows to do good and do, does it not. It's a sin to not have our faith in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and learn to live that way every day. And that's what we are all about and that's what we're preaching and that's what we're learning to, to point others to as we're living it by faith. And that's the faith of the Son of God every day. But as long as we continue to look to that narrow way, then the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us and teach us every day. And I'm going to read this. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5 one more time and take you into one more verse of Scripture or a couple more and then we're going to close out this morning. But I enjoy preaching and teaching the word of the Lord as long as it's where the Lord's got me and it's what he wants for my life it's his will and and when he opens the door I'm thankfully going to walk through it with the word of God on my heart because he's not opening the door that he's not sending us through it with the word and the word's always going to point to Jesus First Peter chapter 2, verse 5, You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And lively stones means living stones. In Romans 8 and 11, it says, But if the Spirit of Him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he who raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit who dwells in you. The word quicken means made alive. We have been made alive in Christ by being baptized into his death through faith in his sacrifice at Calvary. And what does that mean? It means that we are no longer our own, but we've been bought with a price. And that is the blood that Jesus shed on the cross, making the way for us to be free from the dominion of sin to where we can bring glory to God through faith in the cross. And in Galatians 6 and 14, it says this, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me. And in these notes right here, this is what I believe the Lord laid on my heart about this. The world has been crucified to us by us having been crucified with Christ and raised together with him in newness of life to where the world no longer holds 
its attractions. The reason why we no longer want the things of the world is because we've been crucified to the world by being crucified to Christ. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, no longer holds any attraction to the new man who's been crucified with Christ. That's not what the believer in Christ wants to live after anymore. We don't want those things. We are to discern what's right from what's wrong. The Bible says try the spirits because not every spirit is of the Lord. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you better guarantee that I'm trying the spirits with the word of God. What's the Bible say? And as the Holy Spirit leads me, it's not because I want to see people fail and go in the wrong direction. It's because I want to be able to give the word that's going to restore that heart and life back to their path of righteousness if they'll repent and turn back to the victory of his sacrifice because it's not about us anymore. It's about Jesus Christ. That's all it's ever been about anyway. But that's what we're learning to make it about here today. It's all about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And we're going to close with these last few scriptures right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20. What do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you? And this is a question that he's asking to them don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, that you shouldn't be out here doing all those things that you're doing? He was speaking to the Corinthian church who was involved in, in all sorts of, of sins. They may have not been the one committing the sins, but they was involved by association and was not bringing the correction needed that, that should have been brought but the Apostle Paul was telling them by the hand of the Lord, no doubt, what do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you, which you have of God and you are not your own? We no longer belong to ourselves to live lives pleasing unto ourselves to do what we want to do. And when those things, those old fleshly lusts go to rising up in our lives, we are to take every thought captive, every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ because every lust of the flesh, every uh, wrong desire, every affection it, it, that's not right and pleasing to the Lord that's of the flesh has to be taken hold of to the foot of Calvary and given to the Lord's were to the Lord were releasing it into his hands by having been crucified un, uh, with him unto that thing because he was obedient unto death for those things that come up in our lives so we would no longer want to take hold of those things but we could have the freedom that God desires for us to live our lives by through faith in Jesus Christ and him crucified every day so I don't have to go off in some imaginary thought life and live my life outside of the context of Jesus Christ but I get to live my life in the word of God and when things not if but when, because we're still in the fleshly fallen condition, we still have a sin nature in our lives. When those things come up, whatever those things are, you ain't got to go telling everybody what you got going on in your life either. Keep it to yourself and take it to the Lord because he's the one that needs to know because he's the only one that can set you free from it. Not man, not anybody else. It's Jesus Christ by faith in his sacrifice on that old rugged tree. You see, we are to help one another by preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and pointing to the one who was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross to where he condemned our sin 
in his flesh that the righteousness of the law so we could live righteous and holy lives pleasing to the Lord would be fulfilled in our lives as long as we're not walking, leaning upon the arm of the flesh, but we're learning to walk after the Holy Spirit. So there's no more room for excuses. We know exactly what Jesus did for us on that old rugged cross. We know where we stand at with God today. But I can tell you this, if you've got some things in your heart and in your life that are going in the wrong direction, take it to the foot of the cross. Turn it over to the victory of his sacrifice and get up and walk in the victory that he's already given you and made available to you through simply believing that he did everything that you need and I need and we all need on that old rugged tree. And then when we release them things, Glory to God is exactly what we'll be singing. All glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for taking it from me. Thank you for changing my life. Thank you for helping me to walk in that victory and to continue in this thing every day to grow in your grace and to praise your holy name. And thank you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. And I thank you this morning for being here and tuning in and and just continuing to uh, learn the glory in the cross with us as I got my son here with me as as always. Uh, well, as long as I can have him here anyway. Won't be long I'm going to send him off to work. So y'all be praying about that. <laughs> that the Lord will open up a door for him and we just believe in that he will and Praise the Lord for it, and I just praise the Lord for you all, and and just keep shouting the glory of God. You have the victory, and His name is Jesus. Victory has a name, and His name is Jesus. And until next time, God bless you, and I love you, we love you, and and stay determined not to know anything among anyone save Jesus Christ and him crucified because that's everything we need to know.